Okay, we're back, and in this video we're going to focus on some multivariable calculus uh, from the physics point of view. And in particular we're going to focus on the, the differential vector operator called del. Uh, del is, is kind of one of the, the main players in multivariable calculus, and it's used in three different ways, uh, three different types of operators in physics. Uh, the gradient, the divergence, and the curl. And I just wanted to show uh, one or two examples of each one from the point of view of physics so that you can see in multivariable calculus that, that this really does have some useful applications out in the world. You can try to think of it physically to see if the math makes any sense. A gradient is, uh, is something that you see a couple times in high school physics. Um, basically what we have is, is it's a when you have del operating on a scalar. So in other words, it's something that it can take a scalar or a scalar field and turn it into a vector. That means that this thing has to have a defined direction. The direction of, of del is defined as uh, the direction you have to go that seeks out the greatest change, or really what, you know, kind of like in what direction your, your scalar is increasing. So in physics, uh, one, of the, one of the really famous uh, gradients that we have in mechanics is there, there's a relationship between a force vector and potential energy, which is, is a symbol U. Uh, in, in first year high school, or in, in let's say uh, high school physics, you don't do multivariable calculus, so you might re uh, actually write this thing as a one dimensional derivative with respect to position. And uh, probably the best example in terms of the, the forces, the most familiar one, would be something like gravity. So imagine you have a hill. And if you're at the bottom, if you're on the ground down here, you ask the question, okay, well, in the case of potential energy for gravity, you might be familiar with MGH. So in other words, the, the higher you lift something, the more potential energy it has. And therefore, when you drop it, the faster it's going when it hits the ground. Okay, it converts into kinetic energy. However, in, in the case of defining the gradient for this potential energy, we can define the direction of the gradient as going uphill. That is, it, it's pointing in the direction of increasing energy. High energy is at the top of the hill, low energy is down at the ground. Now, what does this, uh, this gradient equation tell us? Okay. The minus sign that we have here is really for vectors, minus signs talk about directions. So if your gradient is going uphill, in nature we know that the force of gravity is going downhill. It's going to make you fall. And so this is the mathematical way of, of talking about this. In other words, nature, for whatever reasons, is always seeking out the lowest potential energy state. Okay, forces drive you towards the lowest energy possible in a given situation. One other example of a gradient in electricity is a connection between an electric field vector and electric potential or voltage. Electric field is the negative gradient of voltage. What this would mean, say for a proton or a positive charge, uh, it turns out that you have high voltage close to a charge, a positive charge, and low voltage far away. So ask yourself, what's the direction of increasing voltage? Well, it's that way, going towards the charge. That would be the direction of the gradient. Well, what does this equation tell us about the electric field? Well, there's another minus sign there. So that means that the electric field points opposite the gradient. 
foot and it points away from a, a positive charge. And that electric field causes a force on a, a second charge, okay, a second positive charge, re repulsively. It pushes it away. Okay, again, from high voltage towards low voltage. Something kind of similar to, to this uh, is what we call divergence. Divergence is the dot product uh, between del and a vector. Okay, so in this case, the dot product, any kind of dot product, what you end up with is a scalar. Okay, so here we're talking about scalar quantities that produce a, a vector quantity that radiates, that diverges away from a, a source. And th these are all physical examples that could follow this little picture here. If that blue blob in the center is a, a source of something, it could be the source of light, it could be a light bulb or, or the sun or something like that. It could be a speaker radiating sound. It could be a, a, new, a radioactive source with radiation shooting out of it. It could be a charge shooting out of an electric field. It could be a mass with a gravitational field, and so on. The point is, the divergence is the mathematical operation that will describe this any of these phenomena. So perhaps... Uh, the, the best known that I'm aware of is, again, electricity, the divergence of an elect electric field. The way you want to read this thing, and when you, when you start creating um, equations for this, the scalar quantity on the right-hand side, you're kind of talking about the source of the vector. What's the source of an electric field? It's charge. One of, one of the famous Maxwell's equations is rho over epsilon. Okay, divergence electric field is rho over epsilon. The rho is, is what we call a charge density. It represents a charged object or a charge distribution. And so uh, basically if you have a charge in the center, these, these arrows represent an electric field shooting out of it. Uh, a second one of Maxwell's equations is another divergence for a magnetic field. This one's a little bit different. There is no point source of magnetic fields, it turns out. For any magnet that we've ever seen, north and south poles come as a pair, an equal and opposite pair. So for as much magnetic field, which is the, the B vector, uh, it doesn't actually radiate outwards. It curls around and goes back into the magnet on the other pole. Okay, it goes from north to south. There is no divergence. There is no single magnetic pole that will match this picture up here on the top. Okay, that's divergence. Think, think radiation. Think something radiating from a point source. And that's what divergence does. Curl is perhaps the, the weirdest one. Curl is the cross product between del and a vector field. And we know that cross products give you as an answer another vector. Okay, so what does this mean in, in terms of physics and, and real quantities? Well, the mo probably most famous curl is um, a magnetic field, which, it, weird as it sounds, it doesn't radiate out of charges or out of currents. It circulates. Curl's an appropriate name because this is related to circulations. A magnetic field circulates around a, a current. Uh, in fluid dynamics, you, you have circulating um, currents of water, turbulence, and, and things like this, vortices. Um, so in this case, if we're looking at this magnetic field, uh, that would be the vector that's curling, that's circulating. So we'd write that as, as del cross B. That's the curl of the magnetic field. Well, on the right-hand side, um, what's, again, what's the source? Well, it's the current. So over on, on the right-hand side, we would have... Uh, 
it, it turns out you have a constant, but that, that constant is going to be multiplying a, a vector. Okay, in this case, this is uh, related to the current. It's called the current density. Okay, so it has a direction. Okay, it's either flying to the right or through to the left inside a wire. <coughs> That's the source of the magnetic field. And what's the magnetic field doing? It's circulating. Okay, so so these these are <coughs> uh, the three main uses of Dell. Okay, from multivariable calculus. Uh, Kuro is talking about circulations, things like magnetic fields, um, fluid flow. Let's say when you put a paddle into water, if you're canoeing, you see little circulating pools of water there. That would be a curl type of problem. Divergence think radiation. Think something that, that radiates out of a point source. Um, all of these examples over here could be described with a divergence uh, type of operation. And gradients, we're talking about uh, almost like the flow of something. Going from from high to low. High energy to low energy. Electric fields go from high voltage towards low voltage. Things like that. Um, all of these can be described in terms of something that's changing through space. And that's what this del thing is. It, it's, it's the rate of change of some quantity um, through space. Hopefully this helps make a little bit of sense and shows you some applications of del. And uh, yeah, until next time, we'll see you later.